working on a 2008 Jeep Liberty with the 3.7 liter V6 and working on the uh, compression of each cylinder. So I'm going to do a step by step of how to do the compression test and also we want to make sure that we have some sort of a gauge on what the results are in all cylinders with dry and with oil. First step is to come over to the fuse box, open it up, and the design on this is horrible, by the way, and this lid doesn't just pop off, but it's the Fuse M25, uh, which is right here. So we're gonna pop that fuse out. Let's grab our little clipper, guys. And it's out. We'll just leave it there, close the lid back down, and then we wanna start the vehicle and let it run until it dies. Okay, so that was the sound of it trying to start, but there's not enough fuel pressure to keep it running, so it's done. Next, we're gonna come through, undo all of these electrical connectors on the ignition coils. So you're gonna squeeze here, the middle point down, and then pop it off. And you do that with all six. This is cylinder one, three, five, and then uh, two, four, and six. So next we want to take these ignition coils out, get your 10 mil, if you got a ratchet, if you got an air ratchet, if you got electric ratchet, whatever it is, we're just going to back these nuts off of all of the ignition coils, like that, and then pull up, give it just a little bit of a jiggle, and it'll come out. Because what we want to do is get down into that spark plug and get it pulled out. But well, we want to do that with all six so that as we're turning the motor over, there's not such re so much resistance and draining on the battery as much. On the passenger side, cylinder two, got the nut removed, but as I'm pulling this injector up, it is hitting the oil dipstick retaining bolt. So we're going to take this 10 mil off and just give it enough so we can move this out of the way. All right, so all of those are taken off. Now we're gonna go in and get the spark plugs out um, using a 5 8 socket wrench. It's got the little rubber piece in there to help hold it tight. So we'll just go in and not use any power tools on this. You wanna do it by hand. You don't wanna break those plugs off in there. Just get a little bit loose. And you can twist it out by hand. And that little boot helps to hold it and get it out of the hole. And we'll take all six out at the same time. As you get your boots and plugs pulled out, it's always a good idea to mark where they go so they can go right back where they came from, especially if you're chasing a problem and trying to figure out where the misfire or problems occurring, you know exactly which cylinder they came from and you can find out if there's any issues. So it's been, and then also, I did use two different size extensions just to make it easier on myself. So the next step, we're going to get our compression gauge out. Uh, you want to make sure that the threads on the gauge match your spark plug size. Usually there's an adapter in the kit uh, to make sure it fits all of them. And then it's always a good idea to put just a little dab of oil onto the O-ring as you're going to be taking it in and out. So get your little oil squirter that you keep on hand there. Give a little dab and then that'll help make it come in and out a little bit easier. You know what I'm saying with the lube. So this next part, when you have this stored it stays in its natural bend and it won't just stare out so it's best to use two hands on this next part when you're trying to get it threaded in to help keep the line straight you just really want to feel it start to go in and then just be real slow with it make sure the threads are catching and obviously it doesn't have as many threads as a regular spark plug so once it starts getting up to that o-ring just give it towards a little bit snug and then you can stop now you want to go ahead and attach your gauge so it's ready to go. So the gauge is set. Uh, let's give it some turns and see what it comes up with. Try to give it about five cranks or so. How'd we do? At about one uh, 200 right about 200 pounds on that 
So what we'll want to do is do this with every consecutive cylinder. Um, but before we do that, I just want to do one at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and put oil in this cylinder, and I'll do a dry and then a wet for each cylinder as we go and do a comparable. So let's make sure we write that down, 200. So the reason we want to add oil into the cylinders, we want to see if there's any extra leaks that are happening uh, or lack of compression on the piston rings when it's making going through its compression strokes. And so if we add oil and we get a significant increase in pressure, we know that we've got a severe problem, either a cracked block or the piston rings aren't sealing correctly. So we're going to do it before and after on all the cylinders so we have a comparable. All right, let's try to oil fire again. Almost got to 210. I'll have to recheck the video feed on that. But it's starting to back off a little bit. It's holding okay. And also on this, so you know how to release the pressure, is push that little gauge and the air comes out of it. On the oiling, you're not dumping a ton in there. You just, I mean, a little bit of squirting. It's it's not much. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not. Just It's like a teaspoon of oil or so uh, that you're throwing in there. So my results through bank one, cylinders one, three, and five, um, well, they're kind of all over the place. Uh, they're around the right range. Cylinder three is obviously a little low. We'll have to look at that again when we're done. Um, but make sure when you're going down and marking your one, three, five, you just go one, two, three. Let's make sure you get the right cylinders written down. So we got them all done. Uh, concern obviously being cylinder six and cylinder three with the lowest pressure and uh, what does that mean well worn piston rings it could be that the intake or exhaust valves are not seating or closing all the way so at least it gives me a direction of where to go with the next step which unfortunately the next step uh, probably is a leak down test uh, may we just remove valve covers and see if anything looks out of place on that but That'll be for a, a different video, a different time, but wanted to show you how to get this done and make sure you take your notes and what path it can lead you down. Thanks.